I've been thinking a lot about uh, about call, right? It's a word that comes up quite frequently in our church. It's something that we hold very dearly to be called by God. Um, I've, I've read the Bible many, many, many times now, and I don't think anywhere in the Bible it says God's call will be easy, right? I, I don't, I mean, it says his yoke is easy, but his, the call is not easy. But it's something that we hold very dear to our heart. In fact, it comes from these stories that we just heard this morning in the gospel when we hear of the disciples being called by Christ to come, follow me. Those words ring so true to all of us. But what does it mean to be called? Really? Like, I mean, have we really ever thought about that? What does it mean to be called by God? In our gospel lesson, we see three things about a call from God. First is that it is life-changing. We are to change the way we live our life if we are called by God. Meaning, if you think about it, when you, were, when you first really truly believed in God and in Christ, if you go back to that moment and you compare your life before that moment to the life after that moment, can you, and I'm not asking for hands, okay, but can you honestly raise your hand saying, yes, I am living completely different than I was? Because Jesus says, repent, repent, because the kingdom of God has come near. Now, oftentimes when we hear that word repent, we think of, okay, I got to list all the things that I've done wrong, and I have to say I'm sorry for them, right? When we think of repentance, we immediately go to confession. And actually, repentance has very little to do with confession, very little. There is some of it, but it has more to do with the way you're living than it has to confess your sins. Repentance, if you took that word literally and translated, it means turning around, turning around. It really means that we have taken a hard look at how we are living our life and saying, this is not the way I should be living. Therefore, I am going to turn around. I'm going to go back to God. I'm going to start following his ways. So there's an acknowledgement that we are living incorrectly. There's an acknowledgement of those sins. There's an acknowledgement and confession of it. But repentance is all about the step when we take to turn around, to live differently in the world. Now, oftentimes I've had uh, conversations with people when we talk about uh, God's call and what that means. And oftentimes our conversations go to like, well, what does that mean uh, tangibly? Well, it means you have to go to church. Yeah, it kind of does mean that a little bit. And it means you should be praying. Yes, it kind of does mean that too. And it, and it means you should be reading scripture. Yes, it kind of means that too. Um, and then someone will finally say, well, why should I follow a God who demands that I live his way and not let me live the way I want to live? It sounds like a narcissistic God. My ways are the best. Glorify me. Worship me. Right? But that's a wrong way of understanding call, of repentance, because God's call in our life is not a demanding thing that we say, okay, we have to live exactly God's way. God's call is to say, God wants you to live the very way you were created to live, the way you were meant to live, the way you should live. God sees a potential in you and says, I'm calling you to that potential. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, plans, plans to prosper and not harm you. God has a desire for us to be a particular person in the world, and his call is to say, live to that potential. Live the way you were meant, the way you were created to be. That's not narcissistic. That's actually loving. I mean, you think about your parents, and your parents, um, when you were born, your parents probably didn't say it in such clear words, but they probably looked over you and said, man, I have such a dream and vision for your life, and I want you to live that life. That sounds like a loving call from our parents, not a narcissistic one. 
The call that we have to repent, turn around and follow Jesus is a way in which we are called to live the way we were always meant to live, the way we were created to be, the way we should live, not necessarily the way we want to live. Because God knows better than we do. He knows our heart better than we do. He knows our personhood better than we do. Because he knew us when we were being knitted in our mother's womb. He counted the hairs on our head even before we took our first breath. God's call is for us to live the way we were meant to always live, to live that potential. The second thing we see in our gospel lesson is when Jesus finally calls uh, Andrew and Peter and James and John. What do they do? They drop everything immediately to follow Jesus. And what do they drop? Their work and their family. Now, I'm not saying God's calling us to drop our family and leave them, okay? That's not what I'm saying. But what it is showing us is that we should be willing to risk leaving familiar securities to follow Jesus. Jesus' call, God's call, the way we were meant to live is a life that it takes on risk, that looks at fear and steps out anyway in faith and not to be sheltered in safe securities, familiar securities. Oftentimes we, we don't do things because we're afraid that we're, we're just not gonna, we're not gonna succeed, we're gonna fail. It's gonna be harmful to us. We might, we might lose our life. So we'll just hunker down right here in the safety of everything. God's call is asking us to be willing to risk stepping out of those familiar securities and saying, yes, I will go where you are calling me. I will go so I can fulfill that potential. It might be risky. It might be fearful. It might cost me some things. But the pursuit of it is going to give so much more. It's going to gain, I'm going to gain so much more. So there is a risk and a willingness to leave those familiar surroundings. That's the second thing. And then finally, the third thing, taking uh, the, the gospel as a whole, so leaving our lesson, but looking at the disciples as a whole throughout it, and what do we see? We see that their call was not the end of it all. Jesus didn't say, come follow me and you will be set. He said, come follow me. And they followed him the rest of their life. It became a lifelong journey to follow God to answer that call. It wasn't just a single moment. It was a whole life long, a whole life broad, and a whole life deep. And what do I mean by that? Whole life broad. Your call encompasses your whole life. Not just the life you give here on Sunday morning, or the life you give on Bible study, or the life you give when you're singing in the choir, or the life I'm giving because I'm preaching. It's not just that. It's your whole life. So it's how you engage and interact with the people that you work with. Your call is there. It drives your character there. It's also when you come home and you embrace your family, how you interact with your family. The call God has on you plays out even there in your life. Or when you're out on the streets walking and you meet a stranger, or in, when you're in your car, or wherever you might be, your call that God has on your life is to be lived out right there, your, your life broad, encompassing every aspect of your life. It should be life deep, meaning that everything we do, everything we focus on, should be teaching us what God, who God is, and what God desires for us. We should be growing deeper into relationship, deeper trust, in his gifts, in his grace, and his promises. Every single moment, the way we speak, the way we act, the way we talk, should be bringing us closer and closer to God. And then, of course, lifelong. It's going to be my call for the rest of my life. No matter what I choose to do professionally, no matter what I choose to do privately, no matter who I embrace, I will, for the rest of my life, be following God's call. That's what call is. 
You and I have it. We have a specific call. We have a general call. Specific, because a lot of people ask me, well, gee, I don't, I've never felt like God's called me because I'm not ordained, or I'm not a missionary, or I'm not, uh, I'm not an acolyte, or I'm not a, a lay assistant, or a deacon. Or, or, those are specific calls. Certain people are called to those positions, just like certain people are called to be doctors and teachers and everything else, and, but you're still living your call out in there. It doesn't mean I can be a doctor any way I want. It means I am a Christian doctor, right? And then we all have a general call, something that is applied to all of us that, and that uh, uh, we all have to be working on. And that really goes to our character. What does God want us to be as a human being, as a member of God's family? And I've said this time and time again in other sermons, and I'll, I'll point us in this direction again because I think these verses need to be written upon each of our hearts and in our minds. Uh, Galatians chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. If you go to Galatians chapter 5, verses 20 and 21, you will hear what Paul or read what Paul says about this is the fruit of the Spirit. This is the fruit of the Spirit. If the Spirit is on you and in you and you are following God's call, you will exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. And what is that? Joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, love, faithfulness, self-control. These are the attributes that we all embody and if we are following God's call, then we should be able to say, yes, I am more loving today than I was yesterday or last year. Yes, I am more kind today than I was yesterday or the year last year. I am more joyful today than I was yesterday or last year. That's a general call to develop our character and to embody that fruit and to give it out into the world, not just to a few people, but for every single person we meet. Our call, your call, my call, is life broad. It is life deep. And it is lifelong. And it's all about fulfilling the potential that God has for each and every one of us to become the person that we were always meant to be. Why wouldn't we want to pursue that? Why wouldn't we want to chase that down? Why wouldn't we want to say, here I am, Lord, send me. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord, this idea of call, that we are called by God, is so dear to us Christians. We remember the call that you had for your disciples to come and follow you. And we all have similar calls to do the same. But help us to understand that really your call upon our life is to become the person you created us to be, you desire us to be, the person we were always meant and should be in the world to fulfill the greatest potential we have. So in this moment, Lord, we ask you that your spirit teaches us to walk correctly in the world, to turn around from our mistakes, to turn around from the places that we've gone that we never should have been, to turn around and come back to you Teach our feet to go where you're calling us in the world to serve, to care, to love, to show grace. Lord, let your spirit teach us to speak rightly in the world, to speak words of edification and to lift people up by what we say and not use our words to tear people down. We pray, O oh Lord, that we speak your truth in all things. We also pray, Lord, that your spirit guides our mind and our thinking. It's not enough to just hold back our words, but change the way we think 
of people and of places and of experiences and situations. May we perceive the world as you do. May we imagine the world as it should be. 